Welcome to the Jet Setter Show, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. Enjoy and learn from a variety of experts on topics ranging from upscale travel at wholesale prices to retiring overseas, to global real estate and business opportunities, to tax havens and expatriate opportunities. You'll get great ideas on unique cultures, causes, and cruise vacations. Whether you're wealthy or just want to live a wealthy lifestyle, the Jet Setter Show is for you. Here's your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Jet Setter Show, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. We talk about all sorts of things on this show. I'm your host, Jason Hartman. Thank you so much for joining me. And on upcoming shows, we have a lot of interesting stuff for you. So stay tuned in and learn more about being a lifestyle entrepreneur. Let's go to an interview today where we talk to an expert on being an expat, expatriation, and how you can live abroad successfully and adapt to the culture culture, the business climate, et cetera, et cetera, and explore opportunities in numerous countries around the world. It's the ultimate freedom to be a jet setter. We will have that interview in less than 60 seconds. Now's your opportunity to get the Financial Freedom Report. The Financial Freedom Report provides financial self-defense in uncertain times, and it's your source for innovative, forward-thinking investment property strategies and advice. Get your newsletter subscription today. You get a digital download and even more. Go to jasonhartman.com to get yours today. Let's talk about expatriation today. And we have a very knowledgeable expat coach on the show with us today. And it's Margarita Gokin Silver. Welcome to the show, Margarita. Thank you. Well, it's good to have you here. Tell us why someone would want to expatriate and leave their home country. Well, there's so many reasons to go and live in another country. I mean, it's just amazing to experience other opportunities, our other cultures. First of all, what you get is you get a different kind of lifestyle. Very few people realize that outside of their own country, the lifestyle can actually be much more interesting and at half the cost. So it's 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 one of those things that you don't know about. A lot of people talk about it's scary, but at the same time, it's it's something that's really worth checking. As a coach, I usually also tell people that there's so many opportunities out there outside of your home country, and by going to another country, you tap into those opportunities. It's it's sort of like new beginnings. Sure. It's sort of like a a new lease on life with a whole new adventure and a whole new start, huh? Absolutely. I mean, travel, business, um, culture, culture, reading, uh, even people you meet, because you have to realize that when you expatriate, you're going on an adventure. And and so are all the other expatriates that are expatriating where you're going. So that means you're self-selecting the people you're going to be with by pretty much the same values that you value in life, such as maybe, you know, discovery, challenge, exploration. They're all there. So making friends is sort of halfway done already because you have a lot in common with those people. So uh, define, if you would, what it means to be an expat or an expatriate. I think there are many definitions of it, Margarita. And some people think of, they have visions of, I'm going to renounce my citizenship so I don't have to pay taxes and I can hide my money. (laughs) There's sort of that crowd. Another one would be someone who's just working for maybe a large Fortune 1000 company and they go live abroad for a a year or so. What does it mean to be an expat? Well, like you said, there are very many (laughs) different definitions. I define somebody who's an expatriate as someone who's living outside of their home country, a place where they were born. Now, some people move to another country and just live there for the rest of their lives. They may actually be immigrants, especially if they renounce their other citizenship. But most usually, expat is someone who moves to another country, lives there for a certain amount of time, and then maybe decides to move to yet another country and yet another country. Those can actually be defined as global nomads because they don't really establish a home anywhere. They go from country to country and just enjoy it for few years that they live there. They don't necessarily renounce their citizenship unless, in fact, they don't want to pay taxes in their home country, in which case they would, and they would then probably take the citizenship of the country they're living in, which may actually make them an immigrant. So I would say an expat is someone that probably moves more often than just going from one country to another and just 
having their residence there. Good. So what do people have to know about expatriating? Are there certain countries that they should really highly consider? There's so much to know about this, and it's such a sort of a, a niche topic. I mean, there aren't, there aren't a whole lot of things written about it, really. It's a pretty narrow field. Right, right. Well, if you're thinking of expatriating, uh, your first, of course, question is, well, where am I going? If you're not going with a company that brings you there with a job and you're going on your own, then my first suggestion would be, well, where is your passion? At least figure out which continent enters you the most. That would be your first step. Then once you figured out the continent that somehow draws you, because you wouldn't want to go live somewhere that you don't find interesting, what's the point of that? Try to narrow it down to just a few countries in that continent. And then once you know that perhaps your choice is between three or four countries, then you go even further and you begin narrowing them down. And, and the main purpose here is if you're doing it on your own, decision on your own goodwill you you want to move where you find interesting and fascinating and 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 that's how you do it and after that step is done what i would recommend before making a decision really truly learn about each country you're considering and what i mean is read about that country perhaps read some books written by people who are residents of that country, read some things online about what expats say about that country. And then what I would suggest is really maybe take a cross-cultural training and compare how your cultural variables compare to the cultural variables of that country. Because if you have a lot of gaps and you're looking at a few years of trying to negotiate those gaps, that may not be the country for you. Maybe you choose another country that's sort of closer to you culturally. Yeah, that may just be too much of a leap then, huh? You've got right. language, culture, money, ever the laws, everything's so different. Exactly. Right, right. So you, you want to be very much prepared for that. Are there certain countries that you see as popular choices? I mean, you deal with clients from all over the world, moving to all over the world, if you will. <laughs> and where are they going to and from mostly? Well, Europe is always a popular choice. People tend to gravitate towards the Mediterranean, south of France. Italy, Spain, Greece, the Greek islands, South America, Argentina has been a choice for the past few years ever since it became really affordable to live there. It's considered sort of like Paris of South America. Lots of people go there and really enjoy it. I heard Costa Rica is also one of those destinations where people like to move and live. So it seems like lots of people are choosing the European destinations or South American, Latin American destinations that they consider safe and also affordable to live in. Eastern Europe also, places like Czech Republic, you have lots of expats living there, establishing businesses and the former states of Yugoslavia as well. So places like that, those are the ones that I've heard and that those are the parts of the world that I'm most familiar with. When they go and expatriate to one of these countries, they start businesses there uh, just as, as self-employed people and, and starting a business kind of from scratch? That that would seem to be a, a very big challenge. And my other question is, how successful do they become? Are these, are these big money-making opportunities, or is it just sort of an opportunity to earn a living and experience a different culture? I think more of a second one. If you were a big money-making opportunity, I think you would come with some sort of backing behind you. Lots of what I've seen in my experience of expats opening businesses up in other countries is they get there, they like the country, perhaps they meet their spouse there even, they stay and and having the Western savvy of business arrangements and understanding how the country works makes them a really sort of a, a makes them a puts them in a very good place to establish maybe a small or medium sized business and live comfortably on that business. In addition, don't forget they become sort of trendsetters there because here's you have an expat who moved from their own country, established a business, a successful business, speaks the local language. Most of them have really rich social lives. They get invited to all the important receptions. So in addition to making money and having a business, they also have these the social life of a, of a sort of a, that you wouldn't have in your own country. You get to go to ambassadorial receptions and things like that. Well, I'll give you that word, the social life of a jet setter. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a, there is a certain word in Russian that for some reason is, is coming into my head. But that's also important to a lot of people who run businesses because people look up to them and 
Usually those who move overseas, the expats, the adventurous kind, one of their values in life is creating impact. And when they see that they create impact, it feels good. It's fulfilling. Yeah, it definitely is. So one of the things that I would think would frustrate, say, an American or a Canadian is that in a lot of these countries, and, and I'm not saying this in, a, in an insulting way, but sort of like there's a lot more behind the scenes sort of little bribery that goes on. And I, I don't think Western people are used to sort of getting things done that way. And many of these countries, it's just par for the course. It's just a normal way of doing things, especially like an American or a Canadian, like a North American or could become very frustrated by that. It does get really frustrating and a lot of people get burned out by that and a lot of people leave and they just don't succeed. I guess in order to succeed in the, in the country where bribery is commonplace, you, you, you have to find your way. I mean, if, if bribery is unethical for you and you don't want to do it, then you have to find another way to go over it. Maybe you don't mm -hmm. do it, but your associate does it. Or right. uh, There are ways that people find and those that do survive and, and the businesses that do survive, somehow they get around it. One other comment. I was looking at real estate in Buenos Aires about, oh, I guess I was there about two years ago. And I've heard a lot of people say that it's inexpensive there. Mm -hmm. Boy, I didn't find that to be true at all. Now, I have not looked at property in Paris. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you're making the comparison, I know people call it the Paris of South America, but it is cheap. But boy, compared to American prices, it's expensive. Real estate seems really in many places all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I don't know what the prices are now. If you give me an example, I may be able to relate. Little, little flats, little condos. Three hundred and fifty, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Very mm -hmm. old and seemed very expensive. It it felt like uh, looking around almost in in some parts of maybe New York City. Those types of prices. Uh, yeah, that that does sound expensive. When when we were there, I don't remember that was that expensive. Perhaps they're catching up on the trend that everyone's going to Argentina. So supply and demand could be. And really, no financing opportunities there either. At least not post financial crisis, but. In America, it's so accessible even now to get mortgages and so forth that it, it just... Right, you know, that would be, uh, yeah, I guess that would be one of the constraints in, in getting property there. I guess it would have to be cash somehow, yeah. So what can people do to make the expat experience just work better? You you, you have so much advice for expatriates. What, what really are some of the core fundamentals? Well, one of the... And it, again, it depends on how you're going there. If you're going there without a job and you're just landing in a new country and here you are, one of the biggest things that are going to sustain you are your relationships with people you establish there. And I don't mean necessarily establish immediately the relationship with local people because, well, in many places that's just not going to happen because you are a foreigner, you're an outsider. So what you must do in the very beginning is, well, of course, you're coming in already prepared. I'm assuming that I've said, you know, you really need to learn about the country, language classes, cross-cultural training, speak to people who live there. So you're coming in and you want to start, first of all, figuring out where do expats congregate? Where do they go? What do they do? Establish a few connections that way. Definitely get connected with other expatriates. Now, I'm not saying that only connect with them. In fact, don't do that. But initially start with that. Create connections, network, create relationships. And from there on, you'll find also your local friends. Another suggestion would be to brush up on your language, take a language in country, language course in country. And just keep exploring, keep asking questions, definitely keep your mind very open and be very, very curious. The worst thing that can happen is you come with an attitude that, well, that's not how we do it in our country. And that immediately puts a judgment on how they do it, which is not where you want to start. So you want to be very open-minded and very curious. And as you learn and as you pay attention to how things are happening, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable day after day after day. And just take it slowly. Another thing that gets a lot of expats frustrated is that they almost feel like infants because here they are, they're adults, they've lived a good life. And here they are in a country where things are working in a completely different way. So it's almost like I'm an infant all over again. And it gets frustrating. You lose your self-esteem, you lose your self-confidence. Don't get into that trap because, of course, there has been a change. 
people do things differently. You just have to recognize it and learn things little by little. And at some point, it'll just click. So you have this great article, Seven Habits of a Happy Expat, and you covered a couple of those really already. Be intensely curious, accept others, don't judge, look at everything as a, as a big learning experience, find opportunities. Anything you want to say more about the seven habits, really? Yeah, it's actually an article I wrote that I made into an online course so that people, you know, in addition to just reading about them, can actually make them their habits. And what I found is those are essential to really being happy and finding happiness if you live outside the country, outside your own country. You've mentioned a couple of those. And, you know, like I said, we talked about uh, looking at everything is an amazing learning opportunities and and again not looking back and saying well that's how I've done it in our country and you know how come they're not doing it in the same way and also like I mentioned before getting frustrated is part of the game feeling sad is part of the game so just recognizing that and keeping that in mind and the last one actually I want to bring attention to or maybe it's not the last one but number six I say in in them is share. And that could mean a lot of things. You know, you share with your friends, maybe you write a blog, share with your family. But one thing that I really think a lot of expats don't consider when they are not really feeling that great is actually finding a professional and not tooting my own horn here, but it really makes a huge difference. If if you are not feeling well in a country you're living in, and but you want to succeed, you want to make it better, you want to live there, Why suffer alone? Get a coach, get a mentor, get uh, somebody that could walk you through the issues that just may need some work. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It just means that you you need a little push. So, you know, a lot of people just don't think about it because they think, well, I'm adventurous enough to do it on my own. Why can't I get up and go? Well, you know, there's so many things that we can do on our own. And if there is help available, then why why really struggle? Yeah, absolutely. That's right. No, that having the help available, such as yourself, can really cut yours off the learning curve and, and just make the experience a lot better, a lot faster, right? Right. Yeah. Let me take a brief pause. We'll be back in just a minute. Will you be any closer to financial freedom in one year? Two days can make all the difference if you simply have the courage to take action on your dream. Attend the Platinum Properties Master's Weekend and become a successful real estate investor. This two-day seminar is led by a panel of experts from around the country armed with the latest real estate investing techniques. You'll learn the smart way to choose your properties, how to grab every tax benefit the law allows, how to put together the most creative financing package possible, the hidden power of the 1031 exchange, and much more. The Platinum Properties Masters Weekend is coming to Costa Mesa, California, October 16th and 17th, 2010. The price at the door is nearly $1,500. However, if you register by May 1st, you pay just $497. For complete details and to register online, go to www.jasonhartman.com. So if one is considering expatriating for financial reasons, are there any sort of really good countries that top the list as to maybe someone's got some money and they don't want to give it all to the government and they want to go to a place where they can live really well? Or the other type of expat is someone who's really looking to sort of arbitrage currencies or wealth. And what I mean when I say that is they're living sort of a middle class life in the U.S., They can live a high-class life potentially in another country because their currency is worth more when they convert it, because their money just goes further potentially in another country. Are there any countries that are really sort of the the top five most desirable for doing it for financial motivation? Well, if you want to have a great lifestyle at a lesser cost, I, I guess I can't really say which countries they are, but my guess would be the less expensive countries where you can still have the level of living that's compatible to what you have. I know, I think in places uh, like Costa Rica and Mexico, there are places where you can live like a king on the middle class income here in the U.S. I don't think it'll be Europe because Europe is more expensive to live in. There are tax havens, I know, but I don't know which ones and how that would work with you moving to Latin America or South America. So I don't think I can knowledgeably speak on that. 
But there's definitely a possibility of you living really, really well on a middle class income in Latin America or South America. And, you know, I know I've done it myself and things that we don't even imagine being able to have, like full time maid service costs pennies down there and for a lot of people it's really hard to get used to but i didn't have a problem all of these things are available at a lot less than they're available in the u.s but as far as tax havens i I don't think i can speak to that knowledgeably i would definitely agree with you i have a friend who lives in the philippines he has a full-time driver butler two housekeepers <laughs> i mean he just lives a high life it's amazing right right. Yeah. right and and you know and that's that's what a lot of people here you know when they speak to their friends who are expats like you did it's a high life and that's actually maybe the words that i wanted to use when i say social life because it's not only the help but it's also the status your status is a lot higher than your status here you're sort of like a it's not like you're a big fish in a small pond but it's this kind of distinguish, distinguishment, you know, small fish in a big pond here, big fish in a small pond there. Right. That's uh, got to be very attractive to people. Is the expat trend, is that at a, sort of an all-time high nowadays or with travel so easy, I would assume it would be happening more than ever nowadays than, say, 10 or 20 years ago, right? I think the travel, you're right, has contributed to a lot of people moving around. The internet, of course, that's got to be a big factor. The internet, right. The global mobility is also influenced by the fact that companies are moving a lot more people around than they did 15, 20 years ago. But it also means that companies are hiring people who are already there. So you have expats that moved on their own to, you know, let's say whatever, Russia, and you have a foreign company, an American company or British company coming in to work in Russia, well, they can hire you there. And instead of spending three times as much for their expats, they spend that much for you there and you are an already made Western worker. So, you know, the mobility is changing as the industry, the mobility industry is very much changing as to how much companies are willing to spend on their workers. And so, and that's another thing to consider. If you decide to move on your own, chances are you may find employment there with a foreign company, if you want. Sure. Maybe a company from your own country, just like you mentioned. Exactly. One of the things, Margarita, I think that always concerns people when they consider something like this is their own personal safety. And maybe you can address the safety issue from two perspectives. One perspective being just criminals in in the area, in the, in the destination country. There are concerns of kidnapping, just robbery, basic crime. And then the other one is, is the government in that country. People don't have the same sets of rights. They're not subject to the same laws that they're subject to in, in their home country. And certainly for Americans, they're used to having a pretty nice lot of rights. And it's not really that way. And we've all seen this in the movies. The right. one that comes to mind right now is, oh, who's in that? I think it was uh, Richard Gere, the movie where he was in China and was accused of murder and they tried him. And all that. that just really scares people, that kind of stuff. Well, you have to be very, very careful. And it's true. If you're going to a country in Europe, you know, probably don't have to worry for for much of anything except for, of course, crime. And, you know, speaking of crime, let's just address the first thing you mentioned. Crime can be, it can happen anywhere. Uh, You can be burglarized on your own suburban street in, in the States. I think with crime, we all know you have to have your street smarts. Even though it is more difficult in another country because you may not speak the language, you may not read the signs as far as observational signs, what's happening around you. So you you really have to be more attentive and more attuned to what's going on and really pay attention. So crime-wise, before you decide to go to any country, read out, read about the crimes that are happening and, and how the crime situation is there and prepare accordingly. That's the only thing one can say. As far as government, that's a valid concern, especially if you're developing a business in another country and perhaps you have a competitor who is in bed with the government. Well, they can either send tax authorities after you and jail you on on the fact of not paying taxes, which in fact you have, but maybe you didn't read in the right instructions and instructions are complicated. Or yes, they could put some drugs into your pocket and then just arrest you on drug charges. You're really scaring everybody right now. <laughs> just well, so I mean, you know. it is, it, 
I don't want to scare yeah, anyone right. and I don't it doesn't happen all that often but it can happen the probability is probably very very low but it can happen and you just have to be prepared for it especially if you're going to a country where these things are possibly happening you know if you're planning to have a high profile uh, have a business or got you know involve yourself in political discussions there so you know you just have to be prepared just to comment on that i remember a few years back i had some polish housekeepers and they had told me that they had master's degrees in, in engineering both of them and i said why why did you leave poland and they had been rather complaining about how they're cleaning houses in the u.s but they were higher up in in poland and they said that they owned a couple of nightclubs and they were very successful actually and the mom Mafia came around and kept hitting them up for money. They had to pay them off or they would destroy their business. Mm -hmm. And so they just finally got fed up and they left. They were concerned about their safety. Exactly. And in some places, government is the mafia. So um, at least you get only one. Yeah, right. (laughs) At least you get both government and the mafia. So, you know, but it's it's not a joke. It's, It's true that these things are, you know, are there and they exist. However, if you speak to anybody who has a business outside of their own country, They'll tell you that, yeah, well, but without that, it may even be boring. Um, (laughs) It comes with the territory. You know, that's what they went to look for, and that's what they found, and that's what they wanted. Right. The other thing I think people need to keep in mind to sort of balance that is that that's one of the things that actually reduces the competition. Because when certain people just don't want to put up with that, if there's that, that really represents a barrier to entry for many businesses or a barrier to consistency. And so if you're willing to be more flexible and put up with these sort of cultural norms in, in some other countries, and this is not true in every country, but it's of course, in, in some of yeah. them it is, then you you have a sort of a sustainable competitive advantage in a way, right? Of course. And also, you know, um, don't necessarily think that it's going to be all on your shoulders. If you're opening um, a business, get a local partner. And right. that's one of the biggest things that I would recommend because that person, not only does that person know how to navigate the laws and the loopholes and everything that person already has relationships built in and we need to remember that uh, most americans operate on a if we look at cultural variables of action versus being most americans are about action but most other countries where you know people move uh, we speak of latin america south america some uh, even places in most places in europe people are about relationships You won't get anywhere in your business if you didn't establish a relationship with the person you're doing business with. And if you have a local partner, well, they've already got that covered. It's really interesting that you say Americans are about action and other people are about being. When you say being, you're saying relationships. Right. There's this, um, there's a cultural variable that I include in all of my course cultural training and the, the courses online that I mentioned earlier, where you determine where you are on a cultural continuum. And one of the variables is, you know, for the lack of a better word, it's called action. And Americans are more towards the doing, whereas a lot of people in Latin South America, Russia, for instance, are towards the being. So, you know, a simple example that comes to mind for an American, it really doesn't matter who they do business with as long as the business is going and, you know, you're doing actions or you're creating something out of it. For others, they don't want to do business with just anyone. They want to first to establish a relationship with that person. And only then will they consider doing business with them. So, you know, a lot of Western managers, when they come, well, let's say take Russia even, when they come to Russia and start doing managing their employees, they notice pretty quickly that while for them it's all about the doing, the tasks, the making something, for the others it's more about the being, the relationship, the uh, and so it becomes uh, sometimes a real, not a fight, but it's really hard to bridge that gap. Right. I would agree with you. I mean, the foreign clients that I've had here in the States over the years, it's always sort of the first thing I'd have to do before we talk about the deal is sit down and have coffee together and talk. And it's very difficult for someone like myself, who I would describe as a type A personality, that would be my self-assessment. I just want to get things done. Let's get to the bottom line. And, Mm -hmm. And no way that does not, not fly with a lot of cultures at all. You really have to you really have to understand that this is part of the process. This is how you do things. Exactly. And that's why I highly recommend actually taking a training and and first of all, understanding what your own cultural variables are and then comparing them to the cultural variables of the country you're going to. 
And if you see a gap, then you'll know that that's where you're going to encounter difficulties and you can prepare. Very good point. Well, your website is globalcoachcenter.com, globalcoachcenter.com. Right. Are mm-hmm. there any other websites that you would like to recommend as resources? Margarita, when you're saying a lot of these things about find a local partner, understand the cultural differences, are there sites where if someone doesn't They know they want to go somewhere, they want to have an adventure, they maybe want to improve their lifestyle by expatriating, or maybe just give it a try for a little while. Mm -hmm. Where do they go to figure out where to go? (laughs) Well, you know, if they haven't quite figured out the country they they want to go to, that's one thing. If they figured out the country, then by Googling just the country and the word expat next to it, you'll probably find resources. But if you haven't figured out where you're going, there's one community of people that I find very useful for this kind of thing. It's also for researching a little bit of what's going on in the country. It's sort of like, I say it's sort of like a Facebook for expats, but it's not really. It's called internations.org and it's an invitation only site so if you know if you want to become part of it you have to get an invitation from somebody who's already part of it but the beauty of it is it's not only online it's it it has people in pretty much every city of of any major countries that get together monthly or every two months for social drinks for you know just networking and this is the way you get to you get to meet a lot of local expats it also has forums divided by country so you can always post a question and it'll be answered so it's you know it's it's a very good website for establishing connections with people great resource thank you any other websites or resources that you want to mention there is one expatwomen.com that's a very big website for expatriate women and you have a lot of blogs on there for people living in many different countries many different cities that blog about where they live and and how that goes for them so that's that's a good site i have somebody that who's working with me to create a israel cross-cultural online course she has an, a site that's called i believe expats moving and relocation guide that um, and just in general, there's so many expat sites out there. If you just put into the Google expat and or expat magazine or expat lifestyle or any of that, you'll have a tons of sites that will come out at you. And some of them are targeted towards British expats, American expats, lots of different places. So you really have to just put it into Google and find it. But those three sites. I would recommend going to. And another thing is, if you have established a country you're going to, look for an expatriate organization in that country. Now, a lot of them are women's clubs, because that's historically coming from spouses of diplomats that been there since like 30, 40 years ago. But many of them are now becoming just a club for all expats. So if you plug in, I guess, and again, into Google, something like expatriate club or newcomers club for that country chances are you'll find a website for for that organization and they are also very good about answering questions good advice well margarita this has been fascinating what would you like people to know in conclusion i mean there's a lot a lot here it is tantalizing it's exciting it's just exotic and (laughs) and it seems so interesting what do you want people to know in conclusion I think expatriate lifestyle is just absolutely fascinating. And if that's something that really fulfills your life, if that's something that goes along with your values, absolutely consider it. However you get there with a company, without the company, with your own business, just by traveling, maybe teaching, maybe simply moving there, definitely go for it. And don't underestimate the cross-cultural part. Lots of people tend to underestimate that, thinking, oh, when I get there, I'll figure it out. Yet that's where the big problems come. That's where the frustration and the stress comes. And that's why a lot of people burn out. So make sure you prepare yourself. And not only language-wise, not only uh, relocation-wise in terms of where you're going to live, where your kids are going to go to school, but also culture-wise. And, and, and make sure you're ready for the gaps that you're going to experience for sure. Excellent. Good stuff, Margarita. Thank you so much for joining us. Just give out your website one more time. Actually, uh, two websites. One is globalcoachcenter.com. That's about my coaching practice. And the online cross-cultural trainings that are available for anybody. And we already have Spain, the Netherlands, and Russia available for purchase there. Coming up, we have Brazil, China, 
Israel, the Philippines, UK, France, Argentina, Germany, Bulgaria, Malta, Ukraine, Greece, Costa Rica, and many others. And that's at academy.globalcoachcenter.com. Excellent. Yes. And of course, if anybody has any questions, they can always contact me through my website and I'd be happy to help. Good. Well, thank you so much for sharing this today. We really appreciate having you on the show. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Afraid you could lose your home? It's a real fear for millions of Americans. But there is hope with our Do-It-Yourself Loan Modification Report. Loan modifications are sponsored by the federal government and can be anything from a reduction of the principal balance to a lowering of the interest rate or an extension of the length of your mortgage. Unfortunately, negotiating a loan modification isn't easy. You'll find step-by-step expert advice in the Do-It-Yourself Loan Modification Report from JasonHartman.com. Copyright the Hartman Media Company. For publication rights and interviews, please email media at JasonHartman.com. Opinions of guests are their own. Jason Hartman is acting as president of Platinum Properties Investor Network exclusively. Nothing contained herein should be considered personalized, personal, financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. Every investor's strategy and goals are unique. You should consult with a licensed real estate broker or agent or other licensed investment, tax, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed. Please call 714-820-4200 and visit www.jasonhartman.com for additional disclaimers, disclosures, and questions.